interesting okay, question. Okay, yeah. So this is from Kevin This is from e. Kevin from um, Oregon. He is a high school math teacher. Oh. Nice. Cool. Um, and a cross-country skier. Wow. Okay. He has a pretty interesting question. Uh, and he's asking, there has been talk within the press and the media about programming and knowledge of uh, programming becoming a third required literacy of education. So at least in the United States, it's very common that you have kind of verbal requirements, uh, learning how to read and write, and mathematics requirements, uh, learning how to do algebra. And uh, I guess he's asking, do you feel that uh, programming could be that third section that's kind of required and designed in every curriculum uh, everywhere? Um, so I think this is a really interesting question. I, um, it is interesting. And I think there's, there's uh, definitely a tremendous value for students learning programming um, early in school. I think uh, there's a lot of things that in the traditional grade school curriculum, and I'm speaking about the US, I don't know much about how that, that works in other parts of the world. Um, hopefully they're, they're more forward thinking than yeah. America has been. Um, but what's taught in, in grade school is pretty much, and this actually goes through high school, is pretty much um, 1950s curriculum. That uh, it really hasn't changed and there's a lot of time spent on learning how to do mechanical calculations. That um, students are basically learning kind of algorithms for doing division, for solving complex problems by following mechanical steps. And they're learning how to do this very carefully and precisely, the kinds of things that computers should be doing. And it would be much better if students were learning how to think about things algorithmically, how to think about how to describe the way to solve problems rather than following steps the way a computer follows them. Um, and so I think um, it's, I'm probably not the one who knows how to redesign uh, <laughs> our um, elementary school curriculum, um, although it's definitely a, a good thing to think about. Um, I think there are you know, great ways to learn about math by doing programming, and, and there's projects that are seeking to do that. Project um, Euler? Uh, Euler, sorry. Euler, there's, there's also a project um, that uh, started at Northeastern doing this. Um, so, so I think there's, there's a lot of, uh, actually uh, it started at Brown, um, but they're, they're, I'm forgetting the name of it now. I was just, just hearing about it earlier today from our, our, our field trip to Mozilla. Uh, but there are projects that are doing things where um, the best way to learn about physics or to learn about math is really to build a simulation yourself. Um, and that's true also learning about lots of things in society like elections or um, how people interact with each other. And if students sort of learned about programming when they were in school, they would understand these things much better than the kinds of, I think, much more difficult ways of understanding them as mathematical models. A lot of, a lot of it is just a systematic way of thinking. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so I, you know, I like the idea of thinking of it as, as sort of a third branch of literacy that, that everyone who wants to function well in the world and, and understand how things work really should understand programming. Um, they don't have to be expert it's programmers, easy. but at least um, enough to be able to, to understand how things work. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a age requirement for Udacity? Um, where are our lawyers? I hope our I lawyers aren't watching. Maybe so, we shouldn't so answer So we that. have no age requirement. Um, there are laws band? in the U.S. about if you collect an email address from someone, um, what age they can be. Identifiable um, information. And uh, uh, we uh, are happy to have all students in the class and uh, students that are un under whatever legal age the, the U.S. Well, law might say. content are is Creative Commons license. So de yes, can definitely take the class and, and we assume anyone who tells us that their age is below whatever the, the minimum legal age is. But what um, I'm more interested is, in is, uh, there, can you be too old? Can you be, uh, you can't be too old. Um, and uh, I know we definitely have 80 year olds in the class. I, I hope we have a 90 year old. I, I, I haven't had, heard from one directly yet. I've, um, I've had a conversation with an 82 year old. That's okay. The oldest, 80, so I think. we don't know he what's going on. Well. Um, you know, I think it's great. Yeah, there, there's yeah, lots of really retired people in the class. I, I can say my mom is taking the class as well as my dad. Um, I, I won't mention their ages, but um, <laughs> it's under 82. So, so that's good. Uh, Let's see. Does anyone have a question they want to ask uh, verbally? Nope. Okay. Um, we get a compliment about, okay. I'm glad. Thank you. I hope people are enjoying it as yes. much as we um, here. Yeah, we're we having a great time teaching it, and uh, you know, a, a lot of what makes the class work is the contributions of, of students as well, so um, it's, it's fantastic. And that's very evident on the forums. That we're, 
some of the stuff we see on the forums we share around the office, and it's uh, pretty amazing what uh, some of our students do. Um, that's my shout out to our students. Okay. Good. Let's see. How do programmers make a new programming language? Okay, yeah, so how, how and why yeah. do uh, people make a new language? Why would you need a new programming language? language? Um, and, and one of the things I, I um, may have mentioned, I don't, don't remember, I that all programming languages are exactly as powerful in terms of once you have the things, that, and I, I did talk about in Unit 2, that once you know about um, if and procedures and variables in arithmetic, you've got enough to write every possible program. And so every programming language is equally powerful. They can all write the same exact set of all possible programs. Um, in a theory class, that's explained more precisely what that means. But once you have those, those few basic things, that's really enough to build everything else. Um, so that raises the good question of why are there thousands of programming languages? Um, and there are thousands, and there are people making up new programming languages all the time. Um, and there are lots of different reasons to make a new language. Um, sometimes it's just for fun, and it's definitely something you learn a lot from, and I think those of you who take the programming languages class next will get a sense for how easy it is to change what a language means and how interesting it is to do that. Um, there are joke, joke languages too. There are, yeah. Languages um, created uh, just to be funny. Yeah, and, and so that's one reason, the, the more serious reasons to create <laughs> a new language, um, that all of language design is, is really a trade-off, and you're trading off things, you're trading off how easy it is to write programs with how fast your programs can run. Um, and we've chosen to teach one-on-one in a, a language that's Python that's designed where making it easy to write programs is more important than making the programs run fast. There are other languages, and if you're writing code for, um, say, controlling the fighter jet, how fast it takes to make decisions is more important than how easy it is for the code to write. You can spend millions of dollars getting the code written um, you hope it's correct, but performance is much more important. Um, so that's one trade-off. Another trade-off is between how expressive the language is and how easy it is to write something that doesn't mean what you want it to mean. Um, and Python is, is quite an expressive language. It's easy to write things in Python that seem correct but don't mean exactly what you wanted them to mean. Um, there are other languages that try much harder to make it so if you write code and the code runs, it's more likely to mean exactly what you thought it meant. And those languages do things that make it harder to accidentally write a program that means something different. Um, so there are lots of different programming languages, and they're you know, both reasons of style and taste, but there are also some good engineering reasons why we need many different programming languages. Feel free to ask a question. Uh, until then, we're going to just look through the forums. Do we have the audio on? Audio is on. Oh, I don't have audio on. Sorry. If someone was talking, please repeat the question. Okay. i got to get better at that. <laughs> 